Okay, you guys know how we play this game. Um, welcome everyone to uh, forum number five. Uh, we are gathered here to address the challenges of the 21st century as manifest in cities. Uh, and we are doing so in the form of a series of action statements uh, that are intended to give guidance to government officials, design professionals, communities, stakeholder groups on what steps can be taken to improve the performance of our cities moving forward in light of the challenges of the 21st century. Uh, so uh, this is broad ranging. It is not limited to the usual package of architectural issues. Instead, we embrace the fact that uh, architecture is serves as a catalyst, as a vehicle, as, uh, as, a, as a built environment setting for all of the forces that come together uh, to operate in cities, uh, economic, social, uh, issues of social justice uh, are, uh, and in the environment and sustainability are at the core. Um, and so group five, because of the problems that group five uh, faced, group five is going close to the end and I'm seeing a request from group eight to also uh, have a little bit more time. Anybody else need a little bit more time to get your act together? Okay, excellent. You are all good sports uh, in the face of uh, Zoom collapse that we're all experiencing today. Um, just a reminder, um, one of the things that I do the second I open a slide is I increase the size of the video uh, as far as possible so it fills up the screen without covering uh, the text at the bottom. The next thing I do is I uh, click on the video, I go to uh, format options, video playback, and I click on play automatically and mute audio. That way, as soon as your slide comes up, the video is going to automatically start playing. You're going to give a live uh, presentation uh, that will take about a minute or less, no more than a minute, presenting the evidence as support for the action statement that your group is proposing. And uh, so we want to begin with the action statement, one of your colleagues, uh, figure out who's going to introduce it. It might be the person whose evidence comes first. And this week, because we have a little bit more time, let's see what happens if we present every slide. So it might, uh, we would appreciate it if your slide has uh, a, big, uh, a, a big contribution to make in support of the action statement. Take the full minute. If your evidence is a repeat of evidence that was presented previously, uh, we welcome you to take less than a full minute because you're simply adding on to a message that has already been presented. Before we get started, are there any questions about our community forum action planning session? All right, and each group we're gonna be asking you to uh, share your screen uh, individually so that you have full control over the pace of the presentation. All right, and I'm going to be moving group eight to the end uh, based on Emily's request. With that, um, welcome to Forum 5 uh, with the overarching theme of the Radiant Garden City Beautiful. Uh, let's have group one. Um, okay, I'll, I can screen share here. So, uh, our action statement was to prioritize human scale in the urban landscape through the programmatic allotment of public space. Um, and you can see here, this is the city of Brasilia. Um, and you can see how these large uh, residential towers sort of based upon and building upon the idea of the radiant city 
um, take over a lot of the vertical space, allowing a lot of the ground space to be opened up as public space. Um, and also the large stretch of road that runs through the center sort of connecting this uh, area of the city with the next. Um, but these ideas actually create sort of loss of scale. And as you can see, sort of viewing from the street level, um, these towers are actually massive and don't sort of correlate to the human scale at all. Um, I guess I can move on to the next. So here is the co-op city in the Bronx outside of New York. Um, it's essentially a plan almost identical to Le Coutier's, uh Radiant City. Um, it has the cross-shaped buildings that take up approximately 20% uh, of the ground plane, um, leaving most of the rest of the space open for green um, programmatic elements. Um, and very little of the space is made up by the zones for, uh, for automobility. And those that are, are surrounded by um, public pathways that interconnect all of the buildings. So it brings the uh, entire area down to a closer human scale. This is also another example of the Bronx in New York's co-op city. Um, here's like how Logan said, they took a, a Lake Corbusier's idea of a radiant city and implement it into this area where these large buildings, which can house a lot of units and a lot of program, which is very effective for land use, and then have this very open green space on the lower levels for any recreational spaces or any needs that anybody needs for events and stuff like that. So. It really was effective towards this side because it's very open and vast and the spaces can be used for different things. But the only issue was um, a lot of these places are very off to the side. So the, for access, you would need some sort of transportation or vehicle, which is a downside to these large cities. In uh, this video and image, we see the Alice Taylor Hayward apartments right behind uh, the architecture department in Wentworth and how they are affected by the urban design that directly blocks them off from the main street that attracts most people and the architecture department of Wentworth being the main, the direct blocker of that and how that affects the approachability of uh, local businesses and how it blocks it from local businesses flourishing in the area as uh, it pushes off of uh, the apartments such a street and blocks them off from the main attraction and similarly the method of stacking and avoidance in the city in in this design does not allow room for sidewalks in between each building nor does it allow for safe parks or communal spaces that are vital parts of the city and it's the disregard for the essential qualities necessities and behaviors of the city that has led to worsened livelihoods in this area Uh, we invite the final presenter to make a summary statement. Okay, so this is uh, one last example of uh, really bad um, new housing developments being established in zones that are um, already isolated. Um, and so you can see isolation from the Orange Line, the Arbor Way, and a bus station depot. And it basically establishes this new housing development which is already in, out of scale for the local area. Um, it just makes it into a really poor place to live. Um, and then kind of the summary here is that um, looking at scale and at how um, our living situation resides within boundaries of the urban context, it's important to for architects to understand like how we're going to go about limiting and creating better spatial solidarity. So no need for any comment. Um, let's keep the presentations moving. Um, we will invite the public to a question and answer session at the end of our presentation. So group two. Can 
you guys see my screen? Okay. Um, I'll introduce the slide. Um, so for our group, we decided to kind of like focus on uh, how we can reclaim uh, street space and introduce nature to promote um, social interaction and economic activation of the city. And so within this image, we can see the reintroduction of the Qiang, I'm gonna destroy this, but the Cheng Qian or Cheng Jian uh, stream within Seoul, Seoul, South Korea, to allow for a communal space for all residents to find a, um, a area to relax and an area to enjoy themselves that would have been lost due to the major highway that was um, covering the river. Um, that was implemented many years ago and they just completely ignored the river and almost destroyed it in the sense that they would rather have the ve vehicular tra transportation than to allow for the community members. So with the reintroduction of the stream, it allowed for the residents and the community members to find a sense of um, togetherness within the area that was otherwise not there. So this is the Boston Greenway, and um, prior to the Greenway existing, there was a turnpike that um, existed throughout this entire uh, span of land, which did not help the uh, pedestrian traffic, and it reinforced the industrialization of this area. So um, when the Greenway was established in 2004, it allowed for pedestrian community communities to grow, as well as the um, interactions between the financial district and the seaport area. Um, also having little to no parking spaces and small other economical um, issues, but it does and for, for better greenery and interactions for pedestrians and potential vendors. Um, I also uh, focused on the Greenway in Boston and showing how kind of like the introduction of uh, the green space kind of like created this um, um, nice um, hiatus uh, to break the urban continuum and kind of like introduce areas where we can, you know, promote uh, like social interaction uh, between the people coming from the financial district to the seaport, as well as um, economic activation of the city as kind of like food trucks and you know other small businesses uh, kind of like uh, were reignited due to the you know the influx of people using uh, the greenway and um, kind of like uh, our, our conclusion is kind of like uh, the reclaiming the reclaim, reclamation of street space kind of like uh, introducing uh, the greenery and the water body kind of like helped break the urban continuum and prioritizing the human scale, which promoted you know social interaction and um, economic activation of the cities. Excellent. Next group. So for hours, um, um it was to create and implement public space around the monument and cities to allow for interaction of life amongst all populations. Rocky, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Right, cool. um, so this is the whole yeah, city yeah. in Saudi Arabia. Um, this city has been around since the 7th century. It holds um, like immense uh, influence and importance to a lot of people in the world. Um, but in recent times, they've started to create like a border of like buildings surrounding the public spaces um, within the city. Um, and these like border buildings, they house uh, businesses that are kind of only accessible to like the upper class 
like population. Um, so as time goes on, there's more developments being created and it kind of starts taking away the essence and the true nature of what the city like represents to a lot of people. And it starts like um, kind of becoming like an isolated city that's only accessible to like the upper class. And then for this, um, it's kind of more of um, how the Basilica interacts um, within the, the city and how um, implementing local gardens that provide an urban environment that surrounds the area of the Basilica and mosque um, and forms separation towards the building. So to like summarize our um, proposal, um, kind of start extending these public spaces like parameters to allow for interaction of life amongst all populations, not just for class populations, but also um, doing so it allows for uh, innovative like ways to like um, implement like transportation to these spaces, whether it be through like buses or pedestrian pathways. Um, so kind of like pushing away like developments and just like leaving the the monuments to be this like public gathering space um, that was its uh, original intentions. Onward. So um, our action statement is to reduce lanes on all large roadways and fill newly acquired space with dedicated to public transit, the transit lanes and pedestrian spaces. So um, Venice does a Venice has existed for a very long time, adding to the architecture and the density of it. And so this forced the city to be able to adapt to the needs of the population. And um, the narrow roadways prevent any automobiles. So a lot, a lot of the city is dedicated to pedestrian spaces and the density allows people to live in this very inhabitable city um, and have everything they need within walking distance. Alex, are you there? So when your teammate, oh, Alex, are you there? His Wi-Fi crashed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been having issues all day. Okay, Shay, this is your moment of truth to shine. This is happens. This is very typical of public presentations. What? Let's see what you can do in uh, architecture is is 50% uh, improv. We got your back. Take it away. Give it a shot. So he also did his project around the island of Venice and how a lot of the roadways and structure was built around the um, Grand Canal running through Venice and how it's um, it has the opportunity to up for other cities to have a space that cuts through the city like this. It doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily waterway, but um, uh, to form these public walkways and to really put precedent on having um, a pedestrian walkable city. Very well done. Now bring it on home, the one, one woman team. Um, uh, cities should be able to adapt to the needs of the population and can be achieved through less rigorous rules that are hard to break for future architects, but rather creating adaptable spaces with change in mind. Excellent. Nicely, uh, nicely imp improvised. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next group. So my group decided to analyze cities that specifically follow the city beautiful movement model. Um, and we decided to analyze where this model proved to be successful and unsuccessful in specific cities. 
And what we came up with was we need to integrate more like pedestrian friendly walkable path to connect these open green spaces to the rest of the neighborhood in order for them to be successful. And so um, in the city of Philadelphia, uh, we're seeing this is Benjamin Franklin Parkway. And uh, we see this visual corridor, these accesses through the roads um, that we're seeing. However, these roads, you can barely see enough space that accommodates for pedestrian activity, but they're mainly like centered around automobiles. So what they're doing is rather cutting through these public um, green spaces at rigorous angles. Um, there's little building integration within the site. So the idea was like there's less eyes on within these spaces and there's not that much movement or um, pedestrian flow. And so rather than becoming a space for social um, interaction, it ironically can become more of a space that um, is more suited towards like any activity because of the lack of um, passive policing. And so it could actually become a place uh, that's more dangerous. So I was actually showing how Washington DC was successful in incorporating the pedestrian needs. So at first I pointed out that the, um, the roads that go vertical to the National Mall are minimal compared to those of the pathways for the pedestrian. And there's open green spaces in between that allow for um, open views and stuff uh, to make the pedestrian um, have like an unbroken path and that there's the, um, the monuments on the end just add to their importance and keep the flow going. And then for mine, I looked at the um, Palace of Versailles that's in Paris, France, and how its local um, pathway leads people from the available garden space that's in the courtyard to the entrances of the, of the palace. Because it allowed, because as that um, garden was just like an open space where as people are waiting for the uh, pass, opacity of the um, of the visitors in the space to be reduced, they are able to like roam into the garden and interact more amongst one another. So that's where the pathway led as it circled around the um, circular uh, um, like water fountain, and just was more usable within the space. Um, I guess Tony is not here, but she essentially chose the same um, place as me um, and is essentially talking about the same open green spaces within the Benjamin Franklin Parkway um, and how the streets sort of divide this parkway and so um, um, where there's less pedestrian activity. And so what, um, to conclude everything, the idea was it's not enough to just integrate um, green spaces and think that it's going to promote social interaction and promote more like um, social reform, but you need to, we need to integrate more accessibility and walk on um, pedestrian pathways to connect um, these public spaces um, with every, um, within the rest of the city in order for sort of this um, to become more of a lively and active space. All right. Who's next? Oops, sorry. Can you hear me fine? Yes. Um, so for ours, we said offer abundant plant life on green spaces to serve as a gathering space that brings together people as an escape from the busy city life. So here I talk about um, Milton Keys, England and how it was influenced through um, gardenscape cities, even though it in itself is not due to the 
um, exact layout of it, but I talk about how there's grid-like structure and how there's mini cities in the cities and how there's plant life throughout even the hardscapes, such as the parking lots. Um, here I talked about the Clyde Warren Park in Dallas and um, how the park is uh, well in this busy city life there's a park in between that serves as a gathering space and how there's um, concerts, films and physical activities that take place and it's a it's a form to um, get people to take a breather from their busy life. Um, <clears throat> this is Domino Park in Williamsburg, New York. Um, uh, I also talk about how a park is a gathering space for the community. And this park here has a playground, a volleyball court, um, benches where people can lounge on. So it's just like um, an escape area for people and also kids where it's like a friendly family area. Um, just bringing everybody in this community and also around New York City um, together. So for our conclusion, we decided that um, part as parks are um, is use an escape from busy life. Um, since if we put more parks in, this would increase the value of land and increase rent. And the but we need green spaces to escape the busy city life and bring people together. Excellent. Thank you, Sal. Mm -hmm. um, so our topic is uh, establishing um, areas within um, like the urban fabric to put more focus on um, pedestrians rather than the automobile. Great. So in mine, I looked at Orsted Park in Copenhagen. So in in Copenhagen, they have what they call pocket parks or small urban green spaces. And it ranges from like just small public green spaces to large full on parks. And these parks provide an outdoor space for the surrounding residential area where they don't have their own like outdoor space. And it gives them a space to socialize, but then also relax and, and rest. And this is a uh, Norinke Station in Copenhagen. It was redeveloped um, into like a shared street. Um, so it's sort of like to keep the uh, pedestrians safe. So you have like the traffic is slowed down now that it's a shared street. And also that sort of theory about the eyes on the street. So you can see the storefronts and all the windows. It's really just trying to keep the, uh, the pedestrians at the forefront of the attention. And finally, I analyzed um, Times Square and I kind of um, talked about how um, the, uh, the, um, the redesign and adaptation um, of the area to like blocking out Broadway and making that a, a complete pedestrian only area um, helped the Times Square area out allowing for um, more safe pedestrian only areas um, and allowing for tactical urbanism to uh, be uh, placed within these areas. So uh, to conclude, we, um, we want to say that uh, we say that um, to establish these or like to provide more of a safe experience for the pedestrian uh, cities must establish these urban areas to help cater to the pedestrian more. And we wanna uh, end with a question to um, end with a question, is tactical urbanism a way to kind of uh, unite people that um, are socially divided within the cities as well. Okay. 
Uh, so for our section, um, we wanted to focus on breaking up congested city grids by implementing a hybrid of green spaces within streets and public parks. So uh, I selected Post Office Square as a great example of a human scaled, socially responsible um, and functional urban plan. This square breaks up the, the multi-lane streets that you see on the left. Um, and the paved lanes in the park allow pedestrians to walk safely through to avoid the need to traverse the dangerous vehicular highway. Um, and it grants a feeling of, of safety as well um and like the windows that face the park provide a great sense of security in the immediate surroundings and the the one lane street creates a manageable crossing opportunity for the pedestrians that move through the city um and that also works towards breaking up the busier two-way vehicular highway um and i think it's socially responsible to incorporate parks in the urban plan by like catering to that individual by providing a protective location for um, a public lawn and um, my question was like, how can we further maintain resident safety in these urban areas without crossing the line into like cameras and surveillance, which is like that next step. And I was talking about uh, how the pathways through um, the park uh, increase communities uh, by traveling throughout and ending up in um, every corner point and experiencing a new viewpoint. Um, this also launches, uh, brings together uh, the landscape and city, which also launches something innovative and uh, it acts as like a new development of the park and it has a creative hub, hub uh, with an active integration between the diverse cultures and social groups. Okay, so um, what I did was I um, did the, um, Melbourne, uh, Australia. Um, they used the greenery space to generate um, enormous and economic um, and environmental public health benefits in the city. Um, and in this green space, um, they use green printing strategies that bring together diverse stakeholders to conserve and expand um, and connect the urban like green space around the area. Um, and I'm just kind of showing here how like the green space is being connected with the buildings and the residential buildings around the area. So it creates a, a better atmosphere. And then for mine, um, I use the example of St. Stephen's Park in uh, Dublin, Ireland, um, how you can take a large green space and kind of break up the huge systematic uh, grid, as our claim says, but um, using small paths within the um, within the green space or the streets themselves help separate um, and define the spaces as well as like the facades of the um, existing buildings around. And then other smaller elements like adding water to a space also adds a nice um, white element that becomes somewhat scenic, as well as gathering space within it. So um, for breaking up our congested city grid, um, we kind of deemed that it's all about kind of like finding a way to separate one space from another um, and kind of trying to find ways of making a street or the park itself become green. Um, like for Carrington's example, of having a, a series of trees within the street or um, for minor Molly's parks, um, having uh, the abundance of trees separated from buildings or Sophia's where it's a series of paths within a green space. Um, so our action plan is to implement programs that fosters communities and give back to the space in order to revitalize desolate urban planning. Oops. 
Sorry, it's not playing. So in my uh, in my evidence, this is a positive one. I'm looking at the skywalk in Seoul, which has formerly been a highway. The transformation of this highwalk into a skywalk introduced a better alternative for the residents of Seoul to walk across the city as opposed to the traditional crosswalk. This skywalk also acts as a home and exhibition to many plants, species, as well as small coffee shops and business shops. Uh, so here we have the city of Jiangji in Seoul, and this is actually a proposal to revitalize a public um, garage space that was um, underutilized and very much um, a lot of like hardscape that wasn't interacted with. So what this um, proposal would ask or like implement is that yeah, actually the introduction the should, noise. I thought it was muted, I'm so sorry. Noisy defined it as unwanted sound has long been treated I'm oh, sorry, that was me. Oh, I was like, I don't even know if that was me. <laughs> um, sorry, so what I was saying is that it implements um, like spatial conditions and a lot of like public accessibility um, with like the public housing and certain amenities that you find on the lower levels, such as um, obviously the parking, but also like uh, parks and green spaces. And it kind of ties back into the surrounding area with like the moments of greenscape as the trees and a pretty direct link of the bridges of pre-existing um, walkways as well. And then my example is the uh, garden by the bay um, in the Singapore. Uh, the, gar the super trees uh, is a part of the uh, like government's overall strategy to transform the Singapore into a city in the garden. So you can see uh, these uh, solar super trees, uh, they just like act as a vertical garden and generating the solar power, acting as an air venting duct for nearby conservatories and uh, collecting rainwater and uh, also like some uh, virus of ferns climbing across in, in its steel framework. So uh, it's like um, operates as a temperature moderators and uh, providing a shelter from the hot temperatures uh, of the very hot climate in Singapore like to visitors working in Venice. So in order to kind of like wrap everything up, what we realized across all of our examples was that the introduction of um, any kind of program, whether they be passive or active systems to help revitalize the space is really dependent on like accessibility and like public interaction. So this can um, like help foster community, um, it can help benefit the surrounding area. But um, a question that we had was like, you know, without the implementation of these really um, expensive or potentially expensive systems, like is there a more passive option to like kind of reform these spaces? Okay, we are doing pretty well on time. Um, let's keep um, moving. So, uh, oh. sorry, I think my computer is being slow. So for our action plan, we are trying to integrate new green spaces and transportation routes to overcome overcrowding in cities. This is the, what I picked. So the site is like located in, a, in Melbourne city in um, Australia. So as you can see, the neighborhood is sitting close to the major road and highway. So, and they have popped pretty good amount of green spaces, which reduce the pollution and noisy from the major, major road and some of the residential buildings were built um, away from the highway. So basically, essentially, they use green space um, 
to reduce the noisy and mitigate it by keeping the residential areas away. Um, so therefore, I think the green space uh, plays a significant role in terms of uh, health quality of the site. Um, so uh, mine is um, the um, park um, in the city of um, the crowd, um, Bangladesh. Um, so that's uh, one of the um, solution that um, the um, city found because since their um, economic is at a um, lowest um, income. So basically they just um, import a um, greenery space um, at the century. So, so the uh, circulation is falling um, at, the, um, at the side here, as you can see the mix of um, the transportation of um, pedestrian and um, public um, uh, and public um, transportations. So, um, so because of that, the slow motion citizens, some of the um, safety and security because everyone is moving so slow um, in slow motions. And so people is able to um, res respect to um, everyone's um, public, um, um, public space. Yeah, yeah go to the next one. Okay, so for my location, which is located in um, Xiamen, China, um, there's a bikeway that joins the city's highway that overpasses the um, bike path and the skyway enables cyclists to safely and efficiently move throughout the dense core of the city, um, which is consisted of 4 million people. And the skyway runs in a straight line parallel to the city's raised um, rampant transit system which really spaced rest areas and multiple um, access points to reach local businesses, shops, and restaurants. You're muted. So uh, Oz or Braden, um, do you no, want to? No, I'm just in my, I'm still seeing Braden's screen. I'm just clicking yeah. the space bar. So I'm Oz, seeing. you are, you're controlling, you're showing your screen. So now you would move to the next slide. No, I know I've been pressing space bar, but. Oh, try the a, a, a forward arrow or down arrow, or mm -hmm. click on the slide. I'm doing both, you know, I'm just going to escape. Okay, so That's this is where either. someone else in the group shares their screen um, because that's how good we are, right? So I would do, if I was a member of the group, I might um, click on share screen. And continue with presentation. Oh, that's not it. This is it, right? This is you guys? Yeah, but I think this is, uh, it's a slide before, so it's one of like the videos. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought, um, okay, go ahead. All right, so basically this is the East Boston Greenway, which I think everyone here is familiar with. And basically, the East Boston um, Greenway was uh, created to kind of go and minimize the, the noise and kind of increase the morale of like the of the East Boston community. So residents would have this place where they could go and be more at peace and kind of have less anxiety and distress and be less stressed. So which is something that green spaces are highly used for, that connection to the many residents around it to kind of have the space where they can go walk their dogs and um, actually have time to get away from their busy lives and be in a less, in a more quiet environment rather than a busy concrete jungle, which is most cities. Especially the traffic, right? And so mm -hmm. here's your chance Oz, to bring it on home. Okay, so basically um, our whole 
just our whole thing was that um, we are looking at all this designs that basically have the same type of um, product where it's like they want to um, integrate like this both screen spaces but spaces in, gen in general and the circulation route that will like overcome the problem of like overcrowding in many cities where you want spaces where people could inhabit and get through and especially dealing with traffic the, the problems of traffic, right? Exactly. Okay. All right. And I'm hoping that um, group five is not taken by surprise that um, when we delete the slides that are not um, relevant, we end up with group five next. Are you ready? Carvins, David, Chiara, and Tony? Um, we actually went, we went at five. What? We already oh. presented. You did? Yes. Yeah, we just went when we were in the in the beginning. Okay. I apologize. Yeah. I, it's think, okay. I think our group that did presenting our okay. like, uh, group A. Yes. Rex and Emily, take it away. Sorry about that. Rex and Emily, are you uh, in a position to present? Uh, like, uh, uh, I'm okay to present my part, but uh, we, uh, Emily has some issue with uh, her internet. So that's why um, we didn't have too much conversation about uh, the company, our idea together. Um, do you want to present anyway? Uh, yeah, I can just present my, my work. Like, uh... Okay, and then we'll give Emily, we're all rooting for Emily, if anyone can help Emily get in here too, that would be greatly appreciated. This is what uh, professional teams do in the face of limited bandwidth. Take it away, Rex, thank you. So uh, my example is like a Caribbean uh, city, which is in Australia and the capital city of the Australia. And the whole city uh, urban planning was based on the like the, uh, the, the big circles around the back uh, uh, from the center, so uh, like a, they give like a plenty of the space to the green areas and also like separate like distance from like each houses. Uh, the reason of that I think the, is to keep the balance between like the uh, human made like stuff with uh, like the natural uh, creations. So like to give like more space to have, let people to enjoy the, the feelings of the, the nature stuff to give like kind of like organic like uh, uh, lifestyles and the feelings for the people. So um, probably that's it. I think that also uh, would be the better way to uh, uh, analyze and also to plan in the future cities and to give the like healthy uh, lifestyle for the, the, all the peoples. So Rex, um, this is your moment to shine. Did you and Emily uh, talk enough about her evidence for you to present her evidence? Oh, unfortunately, like uh, uh, she didn't put like, her video into the slides, so that's why um, we don't have a chance to to talk about this. Okay, so I'm going to model uh, what we do um, uh, when our teammate uh, loses connectivity. We want to maintain a professional appearance. So what we do is we, um, we say um, that, like my excellent colleague Rex just presented, another capital uh, closer to home is Concord, New Hampshire, where the historic industrial town is located adjacent to um, uh, the river that once powered its mills and provided transportation that was the basis for the economic development of the state. In the 20th century, uh, the water, power, and resources were replaced by cheap petroleum, leading to automobile dependency and a division, a barrier being introduced between the historic capital and its, uh, its uh, natural landscape. 
Uh, and so this supports the idea that in envisioning especially the symbolically important capital cities of the world, uh, we need to uh, make, uh, take great advantage of all that these important, these charged spaces have to offer to establish a new culture of engagement with nature and to create a balance between uh, the man-made uh, items and the natural forces as we embrace the fact that no place is truly natural anymore. It is all the product of human intervention here in the Anthropocene. Thank you everyone for such uh, for listening. We now open it up to questions from the community, um, which is how we do this, right? So do you guys have any questions? On um, uh, just while you're thinking of questions, on Friday, we will pass out the term project assignment. And do not be surprised if it looks almost identical to everything we've been rehearsing all semester in terms of uh, reading actively, engaging actively in the topic and lecture, and then using the reading and uh, what the old people say on, on Fridays, using that as a springboard to uh, move way beyond what either Manuel or I have to offer, and instead find your own uh, path based on an authentic, genuine uh, analysis of our cities, the historic forces that formed these cities and continue to transform the built environment of the world for clues on to first, the most obvious things is stop making such serious mistakes. And secondly, ask questions, what can cities do to catalyze meaningful transformation in our world in the 21st century? This is a dress rehearsal for, remember your peak decades in the profession as leaders we need, and by we, I mean the world needs this generation of design professionals to identify the opportunities for catalyzing this type of change. So we'll go over that on Friday. Any questions? It can be about the content. Uh, hopefully it's about the content, not just the format. At this point, we are in the deep middle of this course, at this point, uh, you should channel your future design professional. What uh, the year is 2050, and you are at the peak of your leadership um, capacities. What do you wish we had discussed, not just with these old guys, but with your colleagues? What do you wish? Uh, we had discussed back in 2021 when we had the chance. If you're not comfortable turning on your mic, then um, share your question in the chat. Manuel, do you have any questions for anybody? Professor, you're good. Well, Manuel is working on that. I'll ask a question. Um, I am curious, uh, I'm, this question is for uh, group seven. Uh, these are some interesting proposals, Times Square, uh, Nor Norport and Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Um, do you see the potential for any of these solutions be translated somehow into the context of Boston? 
I, I actually heard recently that there's like a whole committee trying to get shared streets in the North End. Um, I didn't read the article, but yeah, I've been hearing about that recently. Anyone else from that group have a insight to offer? And maybe I have a follow-up question that would go to uh, group one, uh, where we see uh, Brasilia and Co-op City and similar environments, especially the environment of the Wentworth campus itself. Do you see any of these solutions? Uh, what solutions do you see as having potential for having uh, an impact in the settings that, that the five of you uh, worked with? I guess um, I feel like it was for co-op city and my situation or yeah, um, it was effective because they did plan things. Whereas um, the first one, it seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of intentional planning for spaces for its use. So I think just having a focus on its actual usage of the ground plane is what determines how it's how effective it is. Excellent. And I'm wondering, uh, this is to anyone who cares to comment, um, uh, but given Yona's uh, bringing our attention to our own annex complex in relationship to the Alice Hayward Taylor homes uh, that are basically part of our campus, uh, what, what could we do? Our summer semester last year, um, we had this as a project um, as replacing that like inner zone. Um, and I think that the way a lot of people took it was to sort of create a connection between that, um, essentially creating that a public zone in the back and then making access through it rather than having to go around it. So it sounds like you as a studio uh, looked at the potential for the transformation of the urban design of the campus to advance some of the social justice goals that uh, we have all identified, especially in this past year of turmoil. All right, uh, this is by far the best uh, set of outcomes we've had. We are gonna continue to build on this experience uh, and see where you all can take this. Um, you've certainly already exceeded anything that Manuel and I have done previously or any of your uh, the classmates uh, who've preceded you. So congratulations, thank you for your hard work um, and uh, we'll see you on Friday. If you have any questions, you can hang back. I wanted, to tell, I wanted to say, tell them also that I saw I saw them working in teams and that was very good to see the teams yes working together and expressing their 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 cases together so what congratulations to all of you yes thank you thank you